What's going on guys, Kimchi Cowboy. Today we're gonna to do a quick little video, just some thoughts I had before I wanted to leave on a trip about my new or a thousand round review or initial thoughts talk just about the Radian Afterburner and Ramjet on my Glock 19 Gen 5. The first 500 rounds through this, I had about three to six failure to feeds. I don't exactly recall how many, but the ammo I was using was this 115 grain Turin, Turan, however you want to say it, FMJ. And then I was also using ZSR 124 grain. And I also went ahead and shot a couple rounds of the Federal HST 124 grain. But my main carry round is Spear Gold Dot 124 grain. And that is what I'm currently carrying in this Glock right now. So when I went out the first time, 500 rounds, I had about 250 rounds of 115, 250 rounds of 124. Most of my failure to feeds are with 115 grain, none with 124. Three to six, like I said before, I don't know if it was because it wasn't broken in or whatnot. I did lube it and clean the, right, uh, clean the pistol before I went out and I'm running the OEM spring. Radian sells one spring for hundred-ish dollars, I wanna say, and already on top of the $400 Compensator and barrel, you're looking at a $500 bundle. I honestly think Radian should supply you with this spring, but that's just my thoughts. So 500 rounds OEM assembly besides the barrel and the compensator. And like I said before, three to six failure defeats. Okay, maybe I'm gonna have to buy the spring. Next range trip out, 500 rounds once again. I did 500 or 250 of the 115, 250 of the 124 and I had zero issues. So at a thousand rounds total at the end of the day, I had three to six failure feeds the very first range trip, and then zero failure to feeds the second range trip with 115 and 124 grains. So not really sure, maybe it broke in, maybe it just needed that period, but confidently say so far after this, this previous range trip that 115 grains run as long run well through this. Now, I still wanna put more rounds through. It's getting cooler, so to speak. It's not 105 anymore, it's about 100 degrees. So I can maybe last a little longer out there. The gun, the pistol gets pretty dang hot, uh, but we'll see, hopefully I can get out there again before having to go to work. I'm not an expert shooter in any means or a great shooter or a competition shooter. I just like to shoot, it's a fun hobby. Radiant, I believe, says it's 33 or 44% decrease in muzzle flip with their compensator. Even though I'm Asian, I should be good at math. I am not good at math, and I can't tell you if that percentage is right. But looking back at footage of me shooting this pistol before, no compensator and barrel, definitely more muzzle flip. With the new compensator and barrel, definitely less muzzle flip. Still don't know if it's placebo or just like something new and you really like it, but my splits don't lie. My splits between shots are faster. I think I can acquire the dot faster between shots and overall my accuracy seems to have gone in a little better. Now there's days that I suck out there and my accuracy is ass, so I can't tell you, but maybe three range trips, I can kind of give you an average of how I'm doing with it. Does it work? Yes. Now a lot of people have that tendency to say, don't get a compensator because it's gonna mask your flaws and how bad you are at, as an actual shooter. I say as long as you're getting out there and training, as long as you're having fun and you're getting better, who gives? Um, they didn't pay for it, it's your money, go ahead and buy it, do what you want with it. And honestly, I think I'm getting better and it's helping me become a better shooter. So as this is my carried weapon, I should be proficient and accurate with it. So if this is gonna help me, I'll take all the band-aids or assists that I can take. So. That's just my take of those haters out there saying you don't need this. Um, I'm not competing in any competitions with this pistol and I don't plan to. Maybe in the future I'll get something, but yeah. Um, it'll be interesting. My friend has a Glock 45. He wants to try this on. And then also I'd be curious to see in the future if they ever make them for 17s as my buddy has one. It could be a good gift for him. But also I've wa always wanted a 17, but now that I have this and this length and configuration, I don't know if I want a 17 or not. But something else that is new that you guys will see on the channel that goes along with this is I wasn't able to do any of the thousand rounds from concealment. Now that I have a Tiffany Blue Tier 1 Concealed Access Elite Holster, I'm gonna 
worked a lot more from concealment and see if my times have gone down. Uh, for the most part, it comes down to my draw. I need to work on that more. Once again, Tiffany Blue. Uh, the reason I had to get this was because not only does the compensator make your slide the length of a 17, I also got the X300, so I needed a new holster. And since I needed a new one, I might as well get in Tiffany Blue to please the wife so she doesn't get as mad as when I buy 2A stuff. But anyways, that's kind of my quick thoughts of Afterburner. If you're on the fence and you're able to buy one, definitely get it. It is 100% worth it. I think not only will it bring your 19 to life again, I think you'll just thoroughly enjoy shooting it and what it can do for you. One, it looks great. Um, two, it helps your performance. And three, it looks great. Um, another thing is four, I guess, if you live in a state where you can't have threaded barrels, you can run this because it is just, it's like a slip on with a screw washer on the side. If you have any questions about the Radiant Afterburner, and the Ramjet combo, go ahead and ask it down below. Hopefully you guys will stick around for some more content. I'm gonna go out next trip and run this from concealment. So five to a thousand rounds, but we'll see. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm taking this all the way to Colorado on our road trip. So yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video.